Thank you for tuning in to God is Love Ministry 7. This Bible study is going to be an exciting one today. It's 18 ways to live a victorious life. And what I'm going to do is for each point, I'm going to read several Bible verses. So this time around, I'm not going to have you follow along in your Bible unless you want to pause the video and you know flip through your Bible and look up that Bible verse and read along with me um, but I I'm going to be reading a lot of Bible verses so I'm just gonna go through this quickly so um, as an option for you I'd like to provide the outline of this Bible study I will email it to you if you email your request to me at God is love ministry 7 at gmail.com that's G-O-D I-S-L-O-V-E-7 at gmail.com and um, that way you can have this all written down. It's actually a, a very, very nice thing to have to be able to flip through if you want to go back to it later on or whatever. Um, so sit with me, relax, take notes, whatever you want to do. Join me in a cup of coffee or tea or whatever it is you like to drink. And we will start. Before we begin the first point, we need to know that the foundation for living a victorious life is our faith in God's only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, and um, our faith in Him as our Lord and Savior. Uh, he died for our sins, and He was resurrected, and now we have through Jesus Christ, victory over death. So that is our foundation. and We will have eternal life with him. So death doesn't have victory over us. We can die in this world, but we will be raised up again. In 1 Corinthians 15, 57, it says, But thanks be to God, he gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And in 1 John 5, verses 4 through 5, it says, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. So that word overcome means to defeat, prevail, to conquer. And death is our enemy. So we will defeat the enemy through our faith in Jesus Christ. We will be resurrected if we die. And if Jesus Christ comes back for us while we're still alive and remain, we'll be caught up to meet them in the clouds. So we not only have victory over death through the saving works of Jesus Christ, but we can also live our lives here on earth victoriously. And to help us to understand what that means to live a victorious life, if you think of the opposite meaning of victorious, the opposite of victory is defeat. Are we going to let our trials and tribulations in this world defeat us? If we do these 18, 18 things listed here, in which I have compiled Bible verses for each point, we will not fall. We will not be defeated. Just hold on to the faith and, you know, we, we should understand that we are not living in perfect paradise. This, this world is not our home. We're just passing through we're we're looking forward to our heavenly home and um, we need to keep that in mind but we can have a blessed life and a victorious life and let's read about how number one keep God number one in your life in Matthew chapter 6 verses 25 through 32 we can read about how we should not worry about what we eat or drink or about our body, what we will wear, how we should look at the birds of the air and how God provides for them. And then it says, are we not much better than the birds? Of course we are. And um, in that last verse, in verse 32, but um, the pagans run after these things and God knows that we need them. So. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So here we're, we're taught that God cares about our needs. And if we seek him first and if we, if we put him first in our life, he will provide for these needs. 
James 4, 8. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. And here's a really good one for those of us with children. Deuteronomy 11, 18 through 19. And this is also in Deut Deuteronomy chapter 6. But, um, and I'm, I normally read out of the NIV Bible because the language is easier for, especially for new believers to understand. But um, I will be pulling Bible verses out of the King James Bible because of its accuracy and its wording is more accurate in many cases. So here in Deuteronomy in the King James Version, you shall therefore lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your soul, and you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall pre you shall teach them to your children, talking of them when you were sitting in your house, when you were walking by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise. So in all that you are doing, if God is always at the forefront of your mind, in your speech, in your actions, in your thoughts, you know, um, and you're sharing these things with your children. Now, this was talking about those who were under law at the time, but how can that be applied to us today? Well, we can, you know, we can go out on a beautiful day and say, what a beautiful day that God has created. Thank you, God. Um, you can, you know, when you're reading a children's book and to your children and you're reading about how anything about nature really, you know, you can say, isn't God's design wonderful that he created this, this particular way? And, you know, going out for a walk with your children, pick a flower and look at the intricacy of its design and point out that's God's creation. Praise God for his creation. Praise God in all things. Always, always be talking about God, you know, talk to your children about what's going on in the world today and how we have an enemy, the adversary, and how someday he will be defeated um, and how Jesus Christ will return and establish his righteous and just kingdom and government. Things, there's so many things that we can talk about. So rather than leaving the biblical teachings up to the church, without any instruction at home or little instruction at home here is a good instruction for us as parents to always be talking of these things and what a blessing god bestows on our homes and on our family life when we put him first it, it's a very very wonderful thing number two grow in your knowledge of God's Word. Matthew 22 verse 29 in the King James Version says, Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the Scriptures nor the power of God. And that means you are in error, not knowing the Scriptures nor the power of God. You are in error. You are not living a victorious life if you don't know the scriptures if you don't know the scriptures you don't know you don't fully understand the power of God um, Proverbs chapter 2 is a really good one my son if you accept my words and store up my commands within you turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding apply your heart to understanding indeed if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding in other words, if you pray to God for understanding, if you want to understand something, apply your heart to understanding. Pray to God about it. Continuing. And if you look for it as silver and search for it as hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. You have to search the scriptures and work the scriptures and rightly divide the scriptures and look at context and compare the same topic from scripture to other scriptures in the Bible. So you have to work God's word. Um, for the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth and for the Lord gives wisdom and from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. And a side note, Second Timothy Second Timothy three sixteen says that all scripture is inspired by God or is God breathed in the NIV. He holds success in store for the upright. He is a shield to those whose walk is blameless. And another side note, Colossians 1.22. We are blameless. We are holy and without blemish through Jesus Christ. So, 
God holds success in store for the upright, and he is a shield to those whose walk is blameless. That applies to those of us who put our faith in Jesus Christ. For he guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful ones. Then you will understand what is right and just and fair, every good path. For wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Discretion will protect you and understanding will guard you. This discretion, this understanding that will guard you, you will have wisdom and knowledge. And then you will be guarded and protected against those winds of doctrines that blow every which way. False doctrines, deceiving spirits, all of those things that are in the world today and gaining in popularity. So we can protect ourselves from being blown from one doctrine to another by knowing the scriptures and not just knowing some scriptures, knowing the scriptures. Wisdom will save you from the ways of wicked men, from men whose words are perverse, who have left the straight paths to walk in dark ways, who delight in doing wrong and in rejoice in the perverseness of evil, whose paths are crooked and who are devious in their ways. Wisdom will also save you from the adulterous woman, and we can think of the adulterous woman as, um, you know, Israel in the Old Testament is called adulterous because they had gone after other gods. So adulterous in a spiritual sense, wisdom will save you from the adulterous woman, from the wayward, wayward woman with her seductive words. Um, those winds of doctrines are seductive. Satan is crafty. Who has left the partner of her youth and ignored the covenant she made before God? Surely her house leads to, down to death and her paths to the spirits of the dead. None who go to her return or attain the paths of life. Thus you will walk in the ways of the good and keep the paths of the righteous. For the upright will live in the land and the blameless will remain in it, but the wicked will be cut off from the land and the unfaithful will be torn from it. So some of the key uh, parts here are applying your heart to understanding, crying out for insight, searching for it as hidden treasure. Discretion will protect you and understanding will guard you. So let's move on to Hebrews 11, verse 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. God rewards those who diligently seek him. Now, number three, pray always. First Thessalonians 5.17 says, pray continually. And the King James Version says, pray without ceasing. God wants us in prayer always, daily, several times a day. We live in an uncertain world. Ephesians 6.18, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests with this in mind be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints so here pray in the spirit always uh, speaking in tongues is important because that's your perfect communication with God when ye know not what to pray for speak in tongues Romans chapter 12 verse 12 be joyful in hope patient in affliction and faithful in prayer and the King James Version says continuing instant in prayer so when something comes up that you need to pray about be instant in prayer take a moment of prayer Psalm 34 verses 15 through 19 the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and its ears are attentive to their cry so God hears our cries the face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the memory of them from the earth. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. A righteous man may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. 
So in this world, we will have troubles. A righteous man may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. 1 John 5, 14 through 15, and this is the confidence that we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. And then the next point is to put your trust in God. That's number four, put your trust in God. Psalm 54, verse four, surely God is my help. The Lord is the one who sustains me. Psalm 55, 22, cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. Proverbs 3.25, have no fear of sudden disaster or of the ruin that overtakes the wicked, for the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being snared. Jeremiah 17, verses 7 through 8, but blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. He will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes, its leaves are always green. It has no worries in the year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. Now that is perfect for the time we are living in. We, if we trust in God, we will be like a tree planted by the water and have no fear when there's a drought. That's beautiful. Philippians 4, 6 through 7, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and peti petition. So, you know, when problems arise, don't be anxious. Pray, pray to God. With thanksgiving, be thankful in your heart when you pray to God, thank him for the things that you do have and present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And that, that peace that transcends understanding, that's the peace that passes all understanding. We can't understand it. We can't logically explain it, but God gives us that peace. And because he is almighty God and he can do what he wants. And he gives us peace that the world cannot give. First Peter 5, 7, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. God cares for us. He cares for even the little things that we care about. Nothing is too big for God, but nothing is too little for God. Remember that. Number five, wait on God. In a society, in a culture of instant gratification due to advances in technology, it's difficult to be patient and wait. Don't we all know that? But God's timing is always perfect, and we don't always understand God's timing, but part of trusting is also being patient. When we pray for something, knowing that it's God's will, God wants the best for us. We have to be patient and continue believing and giving prayers of thanksgiving and just wait for our prayers to be answered. I've had prayers that took a year to be answered or several years to be answered and I give the glory to God. I, uh, You know, you can't question God or get angry. You just have to wait on Him because He knows what's best. You know, every situation is different. I've had prayers that have been answered, you know, huge things that have been answered instantly. You know, something that I thought would take a few years for it to be answered and it was answered instantly and then other things that I thought that I should have gotten immediately answered it took a while so we just need to remember to trust in God he's always taking care of us we can think of that um, poem about the footprints um, when the person saw that there were only one set of footprints they thought they were going through trials of life by themselves but it was then that God was carrying them that's why they only saw one set of footprints so let's go to James 5 verse through 7 verses 7 through 8 this is in reference to the Lord's coming um, it says be patient then brothers until the Lord's coming see how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop and how patient he is for the autumn spring autumn and spring rains, you too be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. 
So even though this is talking about the Lord's coming, this principle of being patient and waiting, waiting on God's perfect timing, you know, this can be applied to other prayers that we're waiting for answers to. Also, God's timing is not our timing, and we do not understand his thoughts. Isaiah 55, 8 through 9, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Number six, praise God and be thankful even during hard times. Be thankful always in good times and hard times. Hebrews 13, verse 15. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of the lips that confess his name. So that is the fruit of our lips that confess his name, to offer that sacrifice of praise. Praise God. And it is a sacrifice when it's when we're going through hard times. It can feel like a sacrifice. You know, it's it's hard to think of things that we're thankful for. But there's always something to be thankful for. There are always many things to be thankful for. Ephesians 5:20. Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Philippians 4:4. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. And that word rejoice means to feel or show great joy or delight. Find delight in God. Find delight, you know, back to Deuteronomy, pointing out God's wonderful creation to your children and thanking God for a beautiful day. And, you know, find things to be delighted in. Colossians 2, 6 through 7. So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. So be built up with him, be strengthened in your faith, you know, continue in God's word being built up, um, continue being built up by your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, that is the purpose of the church. Um, one of the purposes of the church to to get together and to build each other up to comfort and exhort and to um, to continually be built up we need this and that is why it is such a blessing and a benefit to have God first in our lives and then the last part overflowing with thankfulness I recently went through a hard time and uh, I knew that I could choose to be victorious over the situation or to let it defeat me and affect my family and you know all my loved ones around me or I could just you know think of I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and I can get back up on my feet and I can be thankful for so many things and instead of just dwelling on that one hardship that I was dealing with at the time and just um, being focused on myself, I decided to take that focus off myself and claim my blessings in the name of Jesus Christ and to be thankful for everything. And I went, instead of going through a time of great heartache, I turned that heartache into deep thankfulness for everything else that I had to be thankful for. And God healed my heart of that hardship that I went through. Um, and we can all, uh, you can all think of things, pains in your life, things that hurt your heart and troubles that you're dealing with. You know, I don't have to specifically tell you what my hardship was. You can think of your own. And it's our choice. Do we want to take the focus off ourself and put our focus on God and allow us to heal our hearts? Or do we want to just be focused inwardly and, and you know, dwell in that pain? Number seven, make music in your heart and sing praise to God. And this is tied in with praise and being thankful, but this is um, through making music and, and song. Ephesians 5.19, speak to one another with psalms and hymn, hymns and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. And this 
is a blessing to ourselves because you know if we're merry in our heart and singing songs and praising God what a beautiful state of mind to be in Colossians 3 15 through 17 let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts since as members of one body you were called to peace and be thankful let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom and as you sing psalms hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts with thanksgiving and whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it in the, all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So being thankful is tied in with singing, praising God, you know, all these things are tied into each other. And one of my favorites, which is actually a song too, is Psalm 100, and it's only five verses, says in the King James Version, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, and his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations if you've never heard the song it's so beautiful it goes like this make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye all ye lands serve the Lord the Lord with gladness come before his presence with singing praise God hallelujah glory hallelujah and it just goes on like that and it's just so beautiful I love the way it goes Acts 16:25. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening. They were in prison. They were prisoners, and they were singing praises to God. So even in hard times, this can this can change us. This can take our focus off the situation and put our praise in God, and God blesses us for that. God will just. Uh, Put you in this state of mind where you know like what I said when I was going through that hardship recently I put my focus on God and what I was thankful for and even though I was sad deeply about what had happened um, I was able to be healed and restored and you know still have joy in that time of sorrow that I went through so moving on something that's missing in the Bible is there were no radios back then so it doesn't say turn on your radio and play some good music but we have that available now so we can play some good music that glorifies God on our radio and sing along and just just be joyful okay number eight serve God which is a blessing to you and to others first Peter chapter 4 verses 9 through 11 says offer hospitality to one another without grumbling each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms if anyone speaks he should do it as one speaking the very words of God if anyone serves he should do it with the strength God provides so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ to him be the glory and power forever and ever. Amen. So here, each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in his various forms. So use your talents, use your gifts, your abilities to administer God's grace in its various forms. We all have special things that we can do to participate in the church and building up and edifying and doing the work of God. Philippians chapter 2 verses 3 and 4 says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Romans chapter 12 verse 1 therefore I urge you brothers in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as living sacrifices holy and pleasing to God this is your spiritual act of worship so 
living sacrifices or it's saying offer your body as a living sacrifice we are are more valuable to God alive so that we can do his work Psalm 37 verses 4 through 5 in the King James Version it says delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart commit your way unto the Lord trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass so those who delight in serving God and using their gifts and talents to administer God's grace and they commit their life to God will be rewarded it says commit thy way to the Lord so this is not saying dip your toe in the water it's saying go swimming in the water delight yourself in God and commit your way and he will bring the desires of your heart to pass and the, you know what like I said before nothing's too big for God and nothing's too small for God if you have a small desire in your heart it's not too little and unimportant for God and and in the other way it's not there's nothing too big for God I've prayed for some pretty big things and gotten them you know when you have a, a great need nothing's too great for God that is the end of part one of the 18 ways on how to live a victorious life. And in part two, we will read through uh, numbers 9 through 18.